This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Friday, June the 21st, 2019. It's the feast day of St. Aloysius Gonzaga, the great Jesuit and patron of young people and seminarians. He was a lay brother studying at the Collegio Romano in Rome. In 1591, a plague swept across Rome and the Jesuits opened a hospital for the sick. Aloysius was sent to beg for alms and food for the sick and to provide for the hospital and was one of the most devoted of the brothers to caring for those near death. He confessed to his spiritual director, St. Robert Bellarmine, a doctor of the church, that he was repulsed by the sickness and the sores and whatnot, but like Francis of Assisi with the lepers and Mother Teresa in Calcutta, he powered through for the love of the Lord. Aloysius also had told his spiritual director that he had had a vision of the archangel Gabriel, who told him he would die within a year. Just before his 23rd birthday, Aloysius Gonzaga was diagnosed with the plague and was confined to the same hospital he had served for the past few months. While he was in bed, he had another vision. Although St. Robert Bellarmine never said who Aloysius saw, this time revealing that he would die on the octave day of the Feast of Corpus Christi Thursday. And so it was on June 21st, 1591, that he received the last rites from his saintly mentor and breathed his last just minutes before midnight. Only nine years later, the Carmelite mystic St. Maria Magdalena de Pazzi claimed to have had a vision of Aloysius in which he appeared to her to be radiant in glory, mostly because of his inner purity, which powered and sanctified his outward works of charity. It's the birthday of two popes. In 598 AD, Pope St. Martin I, born in central Italy and pope from AD 649 until his death in AD 655. And in AD 1002, Pope St. Leo IX, born in modern-day Germany, what was then the Duchy of Swabia in the west of Bavaria. Leo IX was a big deal. He was on the hot seat in 1054 when the Great Schism took place. He was your classic high-minded, hard-headed Teutonic aristocrat. He was son to the Count and second cousin to the Holy Roman Emperor Conrad II. Leo came to the throne of St. Peter in February 1049 AD. First things first, he called on the clergy to get their act together. He re-emphasized clerical celibacy and told bishops not to ordain men without first, you know, training them to be priests. This was still during that time when some bishops were hiring random villagers who happened to be able to read and ordaining them as priests. These men would be given the books and the keys to the local chapel and paid to read mass on Sunday and that's it. In the worst cases, these men were never even told they were supposed to be celibate or that they were expected to pray. They gave no sermons. They provided no spiritual leadership. They just read the words, did the actions, and distributed Holy Communion. Leo was having none of that nonsense. Leo was also up to his maniple in invading armies, German princelings, heretical traveling preachers. It was all at once for him. Remember that Francis of Assisi and Dominic weren't the first itinerant preachers strolling across Christendom with sermons to give and alms to collect. There were plenty of heretics aplenty who looked the same. From mid-1053 to early 1054, the Pope was held hostage in southern Italy after an armed invasion of the Papal States. When he got home, he was in ill health and his desk was cluttered with letters from the Patriarch of Constantinople, who was three kinds of angry about some of Leo's decisions which affected the Greek church. Tensions heated up. Just before he died, Leo sent an envoy to talk with the Patriarch. That ended with the head of the Greek church being excommunicated by Cardinal Humbert and the Patriarch returning the favor. And so despite his being dead at the time, Pope Leo split the church into the Catholic West and the Orthodox East. There's lots more to the story, but this is a five-minute program. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.